This happened around seven years ago. I was living with their roommate and going to school, and I was around 22 at the time, and I'm also a female. It was a weekend evening, and my roommate had informed me that she was going out clubbing and staying over at a friend's house. She had invited me, but I didn't really feel like going. Instead, I made plans to sit on my ass watch junk TV, and just work on homework. Around 10 p.m., I went to the gas station to get some candy and energy drinks. I remember that day pretty well because I had gotten out of my classes pretty early and I had just gotten my hair done and I was feeling pretty confident and cute. I went into the gas station and there was three guys probably in their 20s, just lurking around. They just looked like your average frat boys, and I remember that one had shaggy blonde hair and was covered in tattoos. I noticed one of them nudged the other and nodded in my direction as I picked out my snacks, but I didn't pay much mind. They paid before I did and left. After I got my stuff, I walked out to the parking lot and saw them sitting in a beat up, shitty car, and all three of them seemed to be staring at me. I hopped in my car and headed back to my house, which was literally only a few minutes from the gas station, and they started their car and followed. I didn't think much of it, figuring they were probably just heading the same direction as I was. However. I lived pretty deep in a subdivision with a lot of turns, and after a minute of pulling in and making several turns, I noticed they seemed to be following me. I got nervous since I knew I was home alone, so I kept driving past my house. I pulled out of the neighborhood and back onto the main road, and they were still following. I just drove for a while, and they sped up and really started getting close. Then they started flashing their lights and actually pulled up next to me and rolled their window down. The part of me that has faith in humanity thought, what the hell, do I have a low tire or something? But when I looked over and saw them leering at me, I knew it wasn't anything like that and I immediately began to panic a little. We were on a more deserted stretch of the road now and they were swerving, almost like they were going to bang into my car, but I just sped up. All I could think of was, should I drive to the police station? It's like 15 minutes away from here. There's a ton of stoplights on the way. What if I have to stop and they block my car or something? Fortunately, by this point, I was getting somewhat close to my sister's house. She lives pretty close to me, about 15 minutes away but in the opposite direction of the police station. My hands were shaking, and I was trying to navigate the road with these douchebags speeding up and slowing down and trying to nudge me off the road. But I picked up my phone and dialed my sister. She answered on the fourth ring. Without preamble, I immediately asked her if Josh, her husband, was home. She sounded confused, but said yeah. Josh is in the military, and I knew he owned guns. He's a good guy, but we didn't really talk much, and I never felt particularly close to him or anything. I said, tell him to get his gun and come out to the driveway, please. By this point, I was in near tears. I dropped the phone and one of those guys threw something, I think a plastic coke bottle, at my driver's side window when they sped up near me. I finally saw my sister's house and pulled into her driveway. The entire house was dark. No porch light, nothing. I was so screwed. I misheard her, they weren't even home. 
and there weren't any neighbors that would be close enough to run to. The guys pulled up behind me so I couldn't back out of the driveway, and they all jumped out. They all started walking up to my car, and one of them even reached for the handle and yanked on it. By this point, I was fumbling for my phone again. No, no, no. Do I have a weapon in here? Should I grab my phone and try to run? Should I back over these bastards or just stay locked in the car? In the split second that I looked up, two things happened. First, I made eye contact with the shaggy haired blonde guy who was the one yanking on my door. He didn't look angry or drunk or anything. His eyes were dead and predatory. While I was frozen in terror, he looked cold, like he had done this kind of thing before or something. The other guys were trying the other doors, but I couldn't break eye contact with the blondie, who was inches from my face and only separated by a glass window. Second, I finally saw a shape move behind him in the darkness and I heard a loud bang. All the guys stopped and looked, and my hero, my brother-in-law, stepped out of the shadows, creeping up from behind the house. He pointed his gun at them and told them to get the heck out of there. They ran back to their car and sped off, screaming profanities at Josh and I. When they left, my sister ran outside and brought me in. The driveway scene sounds in writing that it took a long time, but in reality, it was only a few minutes. Because of that, and because of how dark it was, we didn't get the guy's plate number. We called the police, and they came out to get our statements. They said they would have someone patrol the area to keep an eye out for any cars that were the same make, model, color, but that it would be hard to catch the guys without the license plate number. Unfortunately, nothing ever came of it. They never caught those a-holes. I can only wonder what they wanted with me, what they were planning for me, or what would have happened if Josh hadn't been there. About 20 years ago, I was driving home from a late wedding DJ gig. I was driving south on a major interstate, which was relatively empty at 2.30 a.m. or so. At one point, in the narrows, the retaining walls on each side get very high as the highway snakes underneath overpasses. Out of nowhere, a young woman jumped down from the retaining wall onto the highway and directly in front of my car. I hit the brakes hard, came to a complete stop, and nearly slammed into her. She looked up, ran to my passenger door, and got in looking terrified. She looked between 16 and 20 years old, long blonde hair, and her clothes looked a little dirty. Not homeless dirty, but like she'd fallen down a few times. I need to call my mom, she said. I tried to calm her down and began moving back down the highway. And behind me, about 50 feet, I see another figure jump down into the highway out of my rear view window. I didn't mention this to her, and she didn't look back or see the other person. I sped up and went about four or five exits south. She kept saying over and over, I just need to call my mom. This was before most people had cell phones, so I told her I would take her to one of the 24-hour grocery stores and she could call her mom. I asked her if she needed money for a payphone what was wrong, 
etc. And she said nothing other than, I just need to call my mom. I pulled up to the grocery store and stopped. She got out quickly, but not running, then ducked into the grocery store. She didn't say a word to me or look back. I pulled into the gas station across the street and called 911 and told them the entire story and let them know the young woman was inside the grocery store and a description of her. I have no idea what happened. I don't know why she did that. What happened to her? Who the figure behind us on the highway was? Nothing. Really made me super uneasy. I think I did the right thing. I would have tried to do more, but she seemed really fragile emotionally and somewhat afraid of me. I am a guy, but really, I just wanted her to be able to get where she needed to be. This happened to me three years ago. I used to throw newspapers for the Kansas City Star. And if you know anything about modern day newspaper delivery, it isn't like little Timmy throwing a small bundle in the morning before school for his lunch money. I threw 1,500 papers a night. Yes, 1,500 papers and you do it at night. Night as in, pick your newspaper up at midnight and throw it until 6 in the morning. You have to roll them up yourself, stuff ads in them, the usual tedious work. It is a terribly repetitive job, but pays well above minimum wage when you have a large route like I had. Anywho, one night I am throwing newspapers in a little place called Holt, Missouri. It's about 45 minutes from Kansas City limits. I am throwing these out of my window when suddenly, I realize the same pair of headlights keeps passing me. It's too dark out in the middle of nowhere to make out the vehicle well, but it was no doubt an SUV or Suburban. I stopped my car and watched it as it rolled past me and went a good quarter mile down the road before, sure enough, it makes a large awkward U-turn back around. It does it a few more times before I finish my papers on that stretch of the road and turn around. This road was a completely flat and straight road for several miles with no light pollution. Only a few driveways for farmers and what you have that live out there. We called them dead roads because you had to drive so far only to throw a few papers. As I'm driving back, I realize the blinding headlights of the vehicle pestering me are no longer moving towards my own. They are stopped in the middle of the road. With barely enough room to pass, I land my horn and scream a few choice words as I fly past them. I will forever regret doing that. I was under the impression it was just a couple of hillbillies drunk and wanting to start trouble even going 50 miles per hour past them and going a ways down the road. I hear their tire screech and the engine reef. Whatever it was, they had it souped up. Very quickly, the situation had now took a bad turn. Very, very bad. They got on my tail within seconds and my poor little beater wouldn't be able to outrun them. They ran my rear end and the unmistakable pop of gunshots goes off. They shot several times, one bullet busting out my back window and whistling past my head. I did the only thing that came to mind and screeched Tokyo Drift style into a farmer's field adjacent to his gravel driveway. The truck follows, but seemed to hit something hard 
and went carnering past the driveway into the other half of the field. I gun it down to this guy's house. I have never met him before. Perfect stranger. I haul ass out of my car and begin banging on the door like a madman, hoping and praying I don't get shot by the person in the killer mobile or the farmer that I'm waking up. The vehicle isn't very far away from me when almost every light in the house turns on at once. The vehicle screeches to a stop and pulls around. I see that it is in fact an old style suburban with massive wheels and no license plate. Then a large burly man wearing nothing but some boxers and several other guys greet me at the door one brandishing a rifle. By chance, the man was getting married in the morning and all of his buddies were over for his bachelor party. Thank God, not all of them got blackout drunk. I filed the police report, yet nothing ever came of it. No other reports ever came up of a beat up suburban with no license plates. I started carrying my pistol and my delivery car after that. My vehicle had seen bullet holes and the back bumper was missing. The thing that messes me up the most is I never found the bumper. Just poof. They ram it, it disappeared. Maybe they took it as a souvenir. No doubt. For a second there, I really thought I was going to die.